Electronic Sounds Audio, the YouTube channel for you. Hey, what's happening guys? It's Dean from Electronic Sounds. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to talk about a concept of CPU usage for iPad synthesizers. I've been using iPads uh, in my music production for the last couple of years. And over the last couple of years I've seen on quite a few forums and quite a few Facebook threads people asking about different iPad synthesizers and how much uh, CPU does this particular synthesizer take up versus how much uh, CPU does another synthesizer take up. And I see a lot of people struggling to answer those kind of questions and I found a really good example uh, yesterday with KV331 Audio's Synthmaster 1 synthesizer to talk a little bit more uh, about CPU usage and how these synthesizers actually take up more CPU um, than other synthesizers. The main concept that I'd like to get across today is how CPU usage is more dependent on the actual patches inside of the synthesizers than the synthesizer itself in a global capacity. I hope that makes any sense, and we're going to go a little bit deeper with what I'm talking about. These synthesizers, uh, they have a certain number of voices. This one uh, can get up to uh, 16 polyphonic voices. and you have a lot of modulation routing options and how you can, um, you know, uh, assign different uh, modulations to be happening in real time as you're playing the synthesizer. And what the CPU usage is actually based on is how many voices and how much modulation and how many real time effects you've got going on inside of the synthesizer at one time. For instance, a patch of like a bass sound maybe that's a mono patch that only plays one voice uh, at one time and doesn't necessarily have a lot of modulation routings is likely to take up a whole lot less CPU than say a very large polyphonic uh, pad uh, preset for example where you could play like maybe eight notes at a time and you're going to have lots of polyphonic notes happening and lots of tails of notes overlapping the next notes that you play when you release that pad. You're going to have a lot of uh, routing on something like that where the modulation um, Mo excuse me, where the modulation matrix is typically going to have lots of modulations set up inside it. You might have an LFO moving the filter cutoff. You might have an LFO gently sweeping the panning of a sound, etc., etc. And so the more voices, the more polyphonic voices or unison voices that are happening at the same time inside of a synthesizer, the more CPU it's going to take up. A patch that has a lot of reverb and delay and modulation uh, matrix routings is going to take up a lot more CPU than a simple patch that doesn't have a lot of effects and a lot of modulation routings. Now, we can really uh, take a look at this um, concept in detail by looking at the CPU uh, meter up here at the top of Synthmaster 1. I'm going to zoom in and we're going to change some patches. We're not going to play any sounds and you're going to see this, this CPU consumption change dramatically based based on the patch itself. Okay, so right up here in the middle of the synthesizer, we've got a little CPU meter. And as I change the, the patches, you'll definitely see that some of these patches by default, I'm not even hitting any notes. It's not even really about that today. It's really just about the concept that the more complicated and the more deep a patch has and the more modulation routings and the more polyphony and the more voices that it has, the more CPU it's going to take up. So for instance, this bass ARP is taking up I don't know, but on average about 9% CPU just sitting here. Whereas if we go back to our default, um, you know, patch, it's, you know, going to be sitting at quite a bit more CPU. It's got a, a little bit more of a robust actual patch there. Here we've got the next patch and it's taking up about 15% CPU just sitting here by default. Here we have the next patch. It's like a toxic trance patch. We're going up to about 25% CPU now. So we'll guess that the modulation matrix is definitely being in use here. You can see there's you know quite a few routings down here. Um, let's skip to the next one. We've got another, uh, this one's even bigger. This one must have quite, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five visible uh, routings right here. And we're now up to 38% CPU. 
Okay, we're going to skip to the next one. This is the lead arpeggio. We're now up to like 37% CPU. So as an example, let me go to a more simple patch, like a bass patch, right? And maybe one that's not um, an arpeggio. Just grab a bass by, uh, you know, random. Um, well, this doesn't actually make sense here because this bass is actually more than any of the other patches so far. Actually, quite a bit of routing there on the modulation. Here we have a base that's 26% CPU. Um, another base here, which is taking up about 38% CPU. So I definitely want to stress that the complexity of the patches um, and the amount of polyphony and the amount of unison voices play the biggest role in how much CPU the patches um, that you're playing are going to take up. Here's another really great example to show what I'm talking about. This is the Quanta synthesizer from Audio Damage. We've got a patch here that's taking uh, six voices, and it's called Soft Synth. And if I just, you know, randomly sort of get some some notes going here, we can see that the DSP in Om is reading at about 28%, maybe 29%, kind of hovering around there. This is a six voice sound, lots of modulation and effects on the sound. But if I go to the maximum voices and I bring this down to say one voice, obviously it's gonna change the sound a bit. But my point here is that we're gonna be taking up a lot less CPU now. We're literally hovering at around 7%. Obviously the sound is different, but my point is, is how just how much uh, effect the amount of voices the synthesizer is using at the same time will have on the amount of CPU that it is consuming. Now, as a sound designer, this concept is something that I'm faced with all of the time. It's always a give and take between how much you want to push the actual synthesizer and how much CPU your patches are going to take up, whereas maybe you could, you know, eliminate a voice here or tame an effect here or something to that effect or remove a modulation to help save on a little bit of CPU. Personally, as a sound designer, my goal is to really push the synthesizers that I'm programming as hard as I possibly can. And I don't really, you know, take CPU usage into account that much personally when I'm programming my patches. Now, I don't want you to think that you're getting the short end of the stick as an iPad producer because CPU usage on desktop uh, VST sense and AU sense is exactly the same. Uh, many moons ago, back in the day, when I was first starting to produce on the computer, I was using uh, the virtual instrument Silent at that time, and I could get about one instance of Silent in my tracks before it would start, you know, crackling and starting to max out my computer. I was doing a lot of rendering tracks to audio at that time. A few years later, a synthesizer uh, came out for the computer by Native Instruments called Massive, which took a little bit more CPU than Silent, and I was really not able to run that one uh, at all without crackles and pops in my audio. Needed to upgrade the computer at that time. Worked with that system for a few years where I could get an instance of Silent and an instance of Massive in my tracks in real time, but if I wanted to add another instance of a, one of those synthesizers, the CPU would start to stutter and sputter. Um, but as long as you're just rendering things to audio inside of your DAW, you can get away with working with just one instance at a time of any of these really complex or CPU hungry synthesizers. A few years later, uh, X for Records came out with the Serum Virtual Synthesizer, which uh, takes the most CPU of any synthesizer I've ever come across. Of course, it doesn't have to. It depends on the complexity of the patch. My point is, is the available level of programmable complexity in something like Serum is so much more grandiose than a lot of the synthesizers uh, that we have at this time. I can take um, an instance of Serum loaded in my brand new iMac with 64 gigs of RAM and just keep adding, you know, polyphonic voices and keep adding modulations and keep adding, excuse me, keep adding effects. And I can get one patch in Serum to easily max out a brand new desktop computer as well. So it just sort of depends on the complexity of the patch and how hard you're trying to push the patches that you make 
the mind. 